To share this film, Batman fans are so passionate. The art alone that I'm seeing online that, that people draw or, or make on their computers based on the trailers and images that have been released, it's astonishing, it's beautiful, um, and the, the fans are very passionate, but, but so are we, and, and I really like the film we made, so I, I, I can't wait to share it. I'm equally excited as Paul for fans to take it in, as he described. There's a, a global uh, passion, a global thirst for this, uh, uh, this series of films and the comics and the characters. And I think I'm excited about a number of things, but I'm super excited for fans to experience this Gotham because I really, I think it's a Gotham that we haven't seen before in film. We've seen wonderful versions of Gotham, but there's a density uh, to this Gotham. There's a decayed beauty to it, and it's massive and sprawling, and and, and I, I think fans will just get lost in it uh, visually, but will also be able to feel it and taste it and smell it in ways that will be super exciting for them, super, super, uh, super immersive. Well, I was genuinely surprised by how powerful Matt Reeves' script was on first read. Not just because of the, the new iteration of the characters and the singular point of view he brought, but because it was clearly coming from an emotional and psychological place along with what you want out of a Batman film, which is an incredible spectacle. Um, the take on the Riddler begins with Matt, and, and, and he referenced uh, the, some real life things like the Zodiac Killer, which for me only resonated so far. I felt like immediately on my character's behalf that his intent and purpose was so much greater than that that I actually almost didn't like him being just a serial killer it felt wrong to me I mean it might he might be I'm just I'm just saying like that's how I felt you know that wasn't enough so the, the, the how to take sort of the bigness of Gotham and Batman but make the contact with reality that Matt wanted and I think that contact is where it it could maybe potentially get really scary or or the character could be be terrifying the more real it is so when we went to work on the costume with Jacqueline Duran, they already had some wonderful ideas in place, but we did go through quite quite a bit of stuff trying to find the exact right thing, S things that you could actually get in the world. Um, the mask was very powerful. It allowed a person who felt completely powerless in their life to feel powerful. Um, his inspiration uh, coming from uh, the Batman, and um, uh, we, we we tried to sort of just uncover every detail, including adding this, this saran wrap around my wrists and head, and and my which was a, a terrible idea after day one when my head was just throbbing to a degree that I was afraid to to, to go to sleep at night because uh, the, the, I thought my brain might swell, and so we learned to poke enough holes in it and and work with that and hopefully that energy went towards the character. Uh, but we had incredible team on this film, top to bottom, uh, Jacqueline and uh, the costumes included. Matt activated uh, the Gordon character in a really clever way through him still being a lieutenant, still being a cop on the street and um, gave uh, an opportunity to explore that partnership with Batman in a significant way. Because again, uh, I continue to say it, but it, it, it's, it's central to who Batman is, at least in his history in the comics, is that he's the world's greatest detective. And I think it's been something that um, 
hasn't been delved into previously in films, not nearly to the extent that we do, but it's the main thrust of our film, and it allows the film uh, a plot-driven uh, uh, center that just serves the interest of our storytelling. And so Gordon is very much um, very much partnered with Batman and very much at the core of things in, in, in that regard. And it's, it's a partnership like Matt described yesterday, he thinks, in some ways like, like Woodward and Bernstein of all the president's men. It, it puts them, um, it, it puts them, um, uh, it, it, it puts them in, in the place where uh, their talents, their skills, their drive can be, uh, can be central. So I, I, I just, I loved it. And I'll tell you the other thing about it, which I think uh, fans will appreciate as well, audiences will appreciate, is that because we're dealing with mystery, we're, because we're trying to trace the breadcrumbs that the Riddler has left behind, every element of the set becomes a part of the messaging that's leading us through uh, this film um, toward trying to un, un, uh, resolve and solve uh, these mysteries. So it really allowed us a certain stillness in some ways that I found really uh, fun to play with because you know there were elements that were on the walls. The, the production design becomes a character, becomes a part of the storytelling in a way I think um, that uh, that's really compelling and, and just kind of unifies uh, all of the elements of our film, the story, the, the, the set, uh, and the characters um, in a way that's quite, um, quite good.